What is secrets detection? Well, as the name suggests, it detects your secrets. But what does that mean in software development exactly? Well, in this video, we're going to dive into what exactly is secret detection and why it's actually a harder challenge than you think. We're going to talk about where you should implement secret detection and how can you tell if your secret detection tool is good or absolute trash. Stay tuned for all of that. You're listening to Tool Time by Aikido Security. So when it comes to secret detection, I guess a pretty good place to start would be, well, what is a secret? Well, on the playground, it's something that you tell someone that you don't want someone else to know. And in software development, it's something that you tell another system or service that you don't want anyone else to know. Usually this is in the form of a digital identification credential. That's just really a fancy way of saying it's an API key or a password or a security certificate. It's basically anything that gives you access to different systems or services. These secrets are made to be used programmatically. That means they're made to be used by our systems that we create. And that creates a big challenge. And that's because, well, these systems tend to spread them out everywhere and they're extremely sensitive. So we need to be able to control them and we need to be able to detect them when they leave. Now we know what a secret is. Why is it such a, a big deal? Well, when we look at all of the breaches that happen in the world, not always, but most of the time, you can isolate the point where a security incident turned into a full-on security nightmare because someone found a secret. Trying to find secrets is typically the first thing an attacker is going to do. And these secrets actually live in a lot of places. So let's start off with how do they actually leak? They have a high likelihood of ending up inside your source code. An API key can be hard-coded into source code to be able to, to use it. Now, you wouldn't typically hard-code an API key or any other credential because, well, we all know they're sensitive. Usually, you'd use something like environment variables, or if you're very sophisticated, you'd have something like a vault, and you'd dynamically call it. The main place that secrets actually end up is in the history of your source code. Let me give you this scenario. Let's say you have a developer, and they have been instructed to create a new feature. And they start this by building out a new branch and they quickly hard code an API key. Now, they're not doing this because they want to leave the key there. They're just doing this because they want to see if the system is going to work or not. They just want to kind of test some things out. So they hard code the credential. Once everything's working, they remove that credential and replace it with environment variables, which they were meant to do. That goes to code review. And the person reviewing the code is looking at the latest version and the latest version on the main branch comparing the two, doesn't see any secrets, doesn't see anything funny, merges the commit. Here's the thing, that secret that was leaked, it exists in your history. It exists there forever unless you rewrite your Git history, which is a whole nother debacle that I'm not going to get into at this point, but it just sucks if you do have to do that. And that's typically the scenario where a secret will be leaked. It's buried in a history, in a long forgotten about branch, and if your source code then leaks or an attack against access to it, then they can steal your secrets and gain access to different systems. Now you may be wondering, yes, but surely no one actually hard codes secrets like this. Well, it happens a lot. GitGuardian does research every year into the amount of secrets that are leaked publicly in public GitHub. I'm really emphasizing the public there. They found over 20 million secrets in the year of 2024 that were released publicly on GitHub. That means public GitHub repositories. That is crazy. About 4% of all repositories leaked secrets, which is bad. But if we actually take a look at private repositories, it's about 30% of private repositories actually contained leaked secrets. So this is a really huge number. We can actually look at some breaches and what's actually happened. For example, Twitch had all of their source code leaked. And inside that source code were over 6,000 secrets including 194 AWS tokens and even some Stripe keys. All right, so we've harped on for ages now about the problem, and hopefully you're all on board with me. How do we actually solve this? Well, we need to implement secrets detection. Now, you may have something called a SAS tool, which I've done a video on, Static Application Security Testing, and most SAS tools will look for secrets. And there's a reason why this is inadequate. 
And that is because SAS is typically looking at the latest version of your project. SAS is trying to identify things like SQL injection, right? If in version one, you have an SQL injection and in version two, you don't, well, then you don't have an SQL injection because you're moved on from that. The vulnerability is gone. Secrets detection is entirely different. When it comes to secrets detection, you need to make sure that you have no secrets in your entire history. Now, by now, you probably understand that secrets end up in your source code and source code has history. But if your source code is private, what's the big deal? Yes, I hear this argument a lot. Well, basically, your source code isn't really that private. Systems like Git or GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever you're using, are designed to propagate that source code to all of your developers. So many people have different access to it. It ends up in various different places. It's stored onto your developers' machines, in your internal wikis, in your Slack channels. It ends up being backed up into various places. It may end up accidentally becoming public when your .git directory is exposed publicly. It has a gigantic attack surface. And if an attacker can get into your source code, there's a very high chance that there's secrets in there, which will enable them to move into higher value assets where they'll probably find more secrets. And it's a problem that most people look at and go, well, that would be pretty easy to solve. I could write some regular expression to identify, you know, typical API keys. I could identify things where it says API equals and there's a long value there that that flags something. Here's the problem. Secrets detection is incredibly hard at scale because most secrets are things that we call high entropy string. It means they're, they're strings of a high level of randomness to them. But most high entropy strings aren't secrets. So trying to identify them based on the string is very difficult. The other thing about secrets is that there's often a lot of placeholders in source code where you have kind of obviously fake API keys, for example. If you have a tool that is going to alert you on every single one of these and start breaking builds and stuff because of it, then you're going to annoy the crap out of everyone, including yourself. So here's what good secrets detection actually looks like. First of all, it's going to identify all of the secrets by various different secret categories. So for example, a Stripe key follows a certain pattern. So it can identify these based on the pattern. Same with AWS, say with Twilio. A good secret detection tool will then validate all the keys that it can. Is this AWS credential real and is it actually valid? That's going to help me get rid of a whole bunch of false positives. Most of the secrets don't have these predefined patterns though. So then we have to rely on other metrics. For example, entropy statistics, defined high entropy strings, but then look at the surrounding code around that to actually identify if this is a secret. It also should include things like anti-dictionary patterns, which basically means, are there English words in there? There's a very low likelihood that an API key will ever have anything remotely close to an English word, which is a good way to get rid of false positives. When you put together all of these tricks, then you get a really solid tool. Now, a trap that people mostly fall into when they're trying to get a new secret detection solution is that they'll test it. And the first thing that they do is they take, open up their code, they hard code a bunch of keys, they run their tool, and the tool doesn't find anything. And it seems like the tool is completely useless. But actually, it's probably the opposite. The useless tool will find them all because they're obvious. But the good tool will actually look at them and go, I don't think this is real because it uses English words. I've tried to validate it and it's not validating. It doesn't meet the appropriate amount of entropy that a real API key would have in all of these different levels. So it can be quite hard to actually test one. If you do want to test a solution, what I'd recommend is using what we call honey tokens or canary tokens, which are real API keys that have no actual risk to them. So what are some great secret detection tools? Well, there's a huge amount of secret detection tools in the open source world, as well as the commercial world. A couple of great open source ones is Travelhog, tends to be one of the leaders when it comes to completely open source secret detection. You also have Git leaks and some various other ones as well. You can just do a quick search on GitHub for secret detection. When it comes to commercial tools, because I work for a vendor, Akito Security, I can't really unbiasedly say what's going to be best because it's probably going to say that it's Akito Security. But what you can do is look at the various different 
things that a sequence detection tool should do and make sure that the tool does that. Now, the final thing about sequence detection is where should you implement sequence detection? Well, there's a couple of places. Now, the main place that you need to implement it is in your remote Git repositories. This is kind of the central source because if a secret makes its way into here, you need to consider it compromised. It doesn't matter if it's private or not. The fact that it made it there means that it will be in multiple different places. That is the number one place it needs to search through all of your history. But what you will find is that it will be a constant cat and mouse game if you just have secret detection here. So you want to implement it on what we say the developer local side as well. Now that may mean in a git hook so that every time you make a commit, it actually detects for secrets or it could be directly in your IDE, your code editor. If you have an extension, for example, the Aikido security extension checks for secrets in your code editor. So to recap, secrets are bad. Hackers like secrets. Secrets often end up in source code. Source code has history. We need a tool to check this history and ideally that tool can validate secrets and as a bonus is implemented on the developer local side as well as remote side. Maybe I should have just made the video 10 seconds and just included that. Oh well, lessons learned. Well, hopefully you found this information <laughs> enjoyable, <laughs> if not informative, and I'll see you on the next video of Tool Time where we're gonna be looking at infrastructure as code scanning. Stay tuned and subscribe to the channel.